Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to NPTEL's tutorial session on the course. Classics in Total Synthesis, which is taken by Professor Krishna P. Kaliyappan from IIT Bombay. My name is Sri Lakshmi S. I am your NPTEL TA for this course and I am a PhD scholar in IIT Bombay under Professor Krishna P. Kaliyappan. So, <clears throat> let me share my screen first. Good afternoon, Prahlad. Uh, is, is it visible? My audio and video is clear. So, can you introduce yourself? Okay. Okay. So, I will be the NPTEL TA for this Classics in Total Synthesis course. I am a PhD scholar in IIT Bombay. I think my screen is visible, is it? So today we are starting this tutorial session for this course Classics in Total Synthesis and all this tutorial sessions will be available in YouTube also. So you will be provided with the links for YouTube sessions and the slides will also be provided by the NPTEL team. So today I am planning to start with week one lectures are already available. So I am planning to start with a week one lecture total summary and we will be discussing week zero assignments. And I cannot discuss week one assignments as it is uh, the due date is still going on. So we will be discussing the week one, all lectures, five lectures were there, all summary we will be discussing. And after that, we will try to solve the assignment questions of week zero. So uh, in week one, we were having uh, basically five lectures out of which three lectures were introduction, general introduction to organic synthesis, basic terms related to organic synthesis, and uh, such kind of things we discussed in, sir, already discussed in uh, lecture, uh, first three lectures. And last two lectures were total synthesis, where we saw the total synthesis of three natural products, iliodin and another FR90098, that natural product also we saw. So one more person is here, Aravin. Aravin then. Can you hear me? Okay, can you introduce yourself? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Welcome to the tutorial session. Yeah. So, basically, the syllabus of the course is introduction to organic synthesis and the synthesis of natural products with three membered, four membered, five membered, six membered rings, and medium sized rings and microcycles. And then we have seen that the organic synthesis, uh, how it is acting as a bridge between various other branches like chemistry, biology, material science and medicine. And uh, the total synthesis is uh, called as the ultimate of synthesis because it is the end of the synthesis where we are utilizing all other synthetic tactics and methodologies uh, to achieve our natural product or other molecules. So classification of organic synthesis is based on uh, 
what is the purpose of the synthesis that it, it can be either target oriented or methodology based so target oriented synthesis means we will be having a particular target molecule which could be either a natural product or a non natural product and methodology based synthesis means we will be designing and developing a variety of methodologies for the synthesis of various reagents catalyst and we will be developing synthetic ideas synthetic methodologies which could be applied in our target oriented synthesis so this was the basic introduction which we got in the lecture one and after that we uh, the professor also introduced to several natural products with three membered four membered and five membered ring uh, which were eludin which is having one cyclopropane ring then fr900848 which is having five cyclopropane and one d, d ribose sugar unit then other with four membered rings we uh, he introduced us to endianric acid penicillin v and thiamycin which are all drugs then uh, with five membered ring with cyclopentane ring uh, prostaglandins isocomine herostine and modifane are there then with six membered rings longifolin carpenon gibberellic acid estron uh, cortisone testosterone like that several uh, molecules are there then also he introduced us to several alkaloids like morphine quinine reserpine and so on so that was basically the content of lecture 1 introduction which we got now moving on to the lecture 2 that was basically the introduction to several technical terms used in organic synthesis so first one was organic synthesis which is basically synthetic organic chemistry that is the same as organic synthesis then total synthesis means i will use my laser pointer now total synthesis means uh, we are planning the synthesis we are planning and executing the synthesis of a natural product the chemical synthesis of a molecule or, or a natural product from where we are starting we are starting from relatively simpler starting materials so that is the uh, definition of total synthesis that is that means complete synthesis <clears throat> now semi synthesis means uh, we are planning our synthesis from an advanced intermediate that is from an advanced intermediate to, to reach our target molecule that is meant by semi synthesis then formal synthesis means we are planning for the synthesis of an advanced intermediate so that is the difference between semi synthesis and formal synthesis in semi synthesis we will be <clears throat> planning our synthesis from an advanced intermediate to our target molecule we will be starting with an advanced intermediate itself and formal synthesis means we will be synthesizing it is just formal we will be synthesizing just up to that advanced intermediate and from that advanced intermediate already previous liter literatures will be available for the complete synthesis of the natural products so we will be developing new ideas for reaching that advanced intermediate now partial synthesis means uh, we can uh, like we can separate a molecule into a natural product into different fragments and in partial synthesis we will be planning the synthesis of a particular fragment of a natural product so that is a different terms in the organic synthesis and we have also seen um, two examples for semi synthesis as well as formal synthesis and partial synthesis as well for semi synthesis we saw the example of taxol which is a drug used in the treatment of ovarian and breast cancer this uh, taxol is isolated from the bark of a pacific yew tree uh, which is low growing so the isolation is little difficult and it will take more time to regrow the tree and then isolate and we will get little amount only after the complete isolation process so uh, there was a high demand for the total synthesis of this natural product taxol then uh, semi synthesis means uh, preparing or synthesizing an advanced intermediate for this molecule taxol so one such advanced intermediate is not preparing like uh, we will be uh, moving with that advanced intermediate for achieving our final target molecule taxol one such advanced intermediate is 10 uh, d acetyl bacatin bacatin 2 uh, which is available in the leaves of the same tree so we know for taking isolating this natural product from the leaves we don't need to cut the trees or um, and many other derivatives of taxol could be planned from this advanced intermediate so that is the example we have seen for this semi synthesis then 
for the formal synthesis uh, i think from this group professor krishna p kaliyappan's group itself we have seen one example for synthesis of vinegrol uh, in which they were planning to achieve a uh, common key intermediate and from that to vinegrol was already previously known now partial synthesis for partial synthesis we saw the example of discodamoli and uh, where four fragments were uh, it was the whole molecule was divided into four separate fragments and synthesis was planned for each four fragments separately then we so the basic requirements and need for the total synthesis that is uh, we should be having a creativity we should be little artistic to think about various possibilities and we should have a basic knowledge of the variety of the reactions that is possible then experimental skills and obviously need for synthesis it applies in almost all branches of science as well as in our everyday life as well then he also told us that synthetic ms is uh, combination of an architect and civil engineer where we will be imagining a synthetic plan and constructing molecules rather than buildings so this was the discussion on a lecture 2 in lecture 3 we saw the uh, history and the introduction to the term retrosynthesis so first molecule which was ever whose synthesis was ever first reported was urea which was by waller in 1828 that was the first molecule to be synthesized and uh, but the term synthesis was coined by kolb in 1845 and he synthesized acetic acid then the first chiral molecule was synthesized by fischer in 1890 which was glucose that was the development in synthesis in the 19th century then moving to the 20th century uh, we so uh, will sector developed synthetic methodology for tropinone and same tropinone was synthesized by robinson where he introduced the concept of multi component reaction and green synthesis uh, then in 1944 woodward synthesized Woodward, who is known as the father of modern synthesis, synthesis, uh, he synthesized quinine, and in 1951 he synthesized cortisol, and 1954 he reported the total synthesis of strychnine. Then, uh, so initially, all these molecules was uh, were simple targets, so that could be easily achieved by these uh, scientists. Now, moving to the concept of retro synthesis, this is actually the reverse of synthesis. That is. our target molecule we are breaking down into readily available starting materials by functional group in the conversion and disconnection approach so this is the synthesis that we are planning to synthesize this compound b uh, from this compound a so in retro synthesis we will be planning the reverse of the synthesis that is we will be planning the synthesis of b by breaking down this bond so that we can uh, plan the synthesis from a so disconnection means imaginary bond cleavage to break this uh, target molecule into starting materials and then another term is syntons that is uh, by disconnecting various bonds the fragments which is resulting is known as syntons and uh, that will be charged species and the uh, uh, available materials for this corresponding synton is known as synthetic equivalents then um, uh, we also saw the discussion on how to plan retro synthesis of uh, molecules like if we are seeing uh, a cyclohexene ring in our target molecule then we should immediately remember about diels alder reaction for the synthesis okay by diels alder reaction the cyclohexene hexene could be achieved and if there is no functional groups or any double bonds or triple bonds in the molecule the synthesis and retro synthetic plan could be more challenging so in that case we have to introduce the functional group or uh, this double bond or triple bond and then we have to plan for retro synthesis so synthesis involves mainly two steps that is analysis and synthesis so we have to analyze the starting uh, target molecule then uh, identify the which are the functional groups or which are the strategic bonds available for disconnection then we have to plan for the starting materials and then comes the part of synthesis then we also see two types of synthesis that is linear synthesis and convergent synthesis linear synthesis means straight forward synthesis that is in a linear fashion we will be planning the synthesis of a molecule but convergent synthesis means uh, we will be planning separately the synthesis of two or more fragments and by coupling these two or more fragments we can achieve our target molecule or a natural product convergence synthesis have the advantages over linear synthesis in terms of yield and also in a 
in the synthesis of a single natural product or molecule multiple person can be uh, multiple persons can involve in the synthesis of a single natural product so that is what we saw in the, the lecture 3 then lecture 4 was the discussion on the total synthesis of eludin m and c where we saw eludin m was synthesized in a key step using both were synthesized by using 13 dipolar cycloaddition as the key step and eludin m for eludin m carbonylylides was used as uh, the dipolarophile and for nitrile oxides we saw uh, for eludin c we saw they use nitrile oxides for the synthesis so uh, we also saw the basic methods for the construction of three member rings that, that is SN2 displacement of a 1,3 diketone or a beta keto ester. Then another method is Simmons Smith reaction. Then uh, sulfur elides using sulfur elides, then cyclopropanation using diazo compounds. These are the various methods for introducing a cyclopropane ring. Then <clears throat> these eludins are known uh, to show uh, activity against selective activity against tumor cells and sir also explained the mechanism of action of this like here is um, alpha beta unsaturated ketone is there in this eludins so uh, that will act as the Michael acceptor where the nucleophile from the DNA can attack on this that will result in the formation of a diene uh, then again other nucleophile from the DNA will attack on this epoxide and epoxide ring opening will take place and this whole ring will convert into an aromatic ring. So that is the mechanism of action of eludins. Then for this eludin M, uh, first synthesis was reported by uh, Kindler in 1994, which was a six step approach. And um, for eludin C, eludin C is here, which was a 10 step approach by Fung in, uh, with overall yield of 8.2 percentage where uh, intramolecular nitrile oxide, olefin cycloaddition, dipolar cycloaddition was the key reaction. Then sir also explained very briefly about 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition, which was the concept was first introduced by Buchner in 1888, where a dipolarophile, which is a, basically an alkene, a 1,3 dipole, that could be a carbonylide or nitrile oxide will be incorporated uh, to get the five membered rings. That is basically it is a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reactions. So, this 1,3 dipoles could be either allyl anion type or propargyl anion type. So, carbonylylide is an example for allyl anion type uh, dipolarophile and nitrile oxide is an example for, um, example for propargyl anion type of dipolarophile. Then, then the final uh, lecture that was about the total synthesis of FR900848. And this molecule was first isolated by Yoshai in 1990 uh, from the broth of a streptovertisilium uh, species. And the synthetic challenges for this molecules were 14 chiral centers present in this molecule, including five cyclopropanes ring and three E double bonds. So the first synthesis was reported by Barrett Group in 1996. Here, the key reaction involved is Simmons-Smith reaction, which is a carbene-based reaction for the construction of this cyclopropane ring units. So, for the cyclopropanation, he also told asymmetric methods are also available, like asymmetric Sim uh, Simmons-Smith reactions where we can use allylic alcohols, like chiral auxiliary base where the hydroxyl group will be directing the uh, cyclopropanation reaction and it controls the stereochemistry of cyclopropanation then other reactions involving like boron based catalyst using chiral ligands also we can introduce asymmetry for cyclopropanation reactions so these were the first five lectures of week one so any clarification or any questions in these five lectures you can we can discuss now These are the basic things, just we eat all the synthesis and classification, then uh, several technical terms related to synthesis, and then history of the synthesis, then total synthesis of eludin M and C, 
and the basic key reaction utilized in that and the total synthesis of fr 900848 and the key reaction used in that is simon smith reaction so i think uh, while going through the summary lecture itself this is sufficient for answering all the questions in the assignment 1 so i will not be discussing the assignment 1 here because still its due period is going on so that maybe we can discuss it in the next class so we will be discussing the week 0 assignments so the first question is correct structures of monoterpenes camphor and alpha pinene respectively are uh, so prahlad can you unmute yourself and respond assignment 0 was there they are not evaluating it but just for knowing the pattern and to recollect all the things one assignment was there so this is not compulsory assignments but we will be discussing that questions now so no problem if you didn't attend it or not yeah you know i think week zero assignment they didn't send the link but that is already in that nptel site swayam portal it is there yeah uh, no problem we can discuss it now also i have attached all the questions and there is no due date or anything for this assignment also and they, this is not for evaluation purpose as well so prahlad can you try to attempt this question Okay, camphor and alpha pinene. Arvind, then uh, can you try? I think one more person is there. Shantiya. structure of camphor like out of this 1 and 2 which is the structure of camphor and out of this 3 and 4 which is the correct structure of pinene one and four yes you are correct here yeah yes so this is the structure of camphor that is option 1 and this is the structure of alpha pinene this one fourth one so now next question identify a in the following reactions so we have to identify the starting material product they have given and the series of reaction is nocl pyridine condition then hydrolysis and then swann oxidation so can you try three of you try to do this and then we can discuss anyway only if you are there so you can unmute yourself and we will be having a discussion session which reaction will be the first condition nocl pyridine condition what will be happening in that condition for that what is needed Uh, can you explain that
alcohol to aldehyde in which condition it will get converted okay i will tell the answer you try to solve the mechanism that will be fine yeah so option 1 is the correct answer now can you think of the mechanism So this first condition, NOCl pyridine condition on the starting material, what it will be doing? It's not a free radical addition. Uh, that they haven't mentioned actually it is free radical or thermal or anything. Just they have mentioned like NOCl pyridine and they are getting this. So we can think if possible, we can think of the possibilities. If it is free radical, then what will be the product? Yeah. Therefore, for swan oxidation condition, we need free alcohol group. Because here we can see a primary alcohol is converted into an aldehyde. This is this alcohol is not affected in that condition. And that, that is actually converted to ketone. And so here we need a primary alcohol in the uh, before this one oxidation step. Then only we can make this aldehyde, right? Here one OH should be there. So how that OH can come in this NOCl pyridine hydrolysis condition? Prahlad, you can also try. Have you heard of Barton reaction? Button reaction. Button reaction basically happens in photochemical conditions. Have you heard of that? Okay. So this is actually a button reaction that is in presence of NOCl and pyridine condition. Our alcohol will be converted into this ONO bond. Then uh, from the delta position, a hydrogen atom will be abstracted by this oxygen and this NO group will be attached on that delta position. That is alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So out of the two hydrogens available in delta position, one hydrogen atom will be abstracted by this oxygen and this NO bond will come here. So this and this is a tautomeric form. This is the oxygen form and this is the tautomeric form of that. And on hydrolyzing this bond, we will be able to get that OH here. NOH will be turned to OH. So thereby we will be getting CH2OH at this position and when we are subjecting that compound to swan oxidation condition, we will be getting this aldehyde and ketone as well. NOCl will be attacking on the alcohol. This is the starting material, right? So here O N O bond will be forming. And then from delta position means alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So here three hydrogens are available. From that it can, this oxygen will be abstracting one proton from here. Like it is like a one five hydrogen shift. Then that N O group, whichever is at, attached here will go to this position and here it will become OH again. Is it okay? And swan oxidation, I hope you know the mechanism of that. Using DMSO and oxalyl chloride, uh, this will be the, this S plus CL, CL will be the active species for this swan oxidation. 
in which basically alcohols will be oxidized to ketones or aldehydes. Now moving to the second question, uh, just match the following. Here four structures are given. We have to match it with these four uh, alkaloids like morphine, nicotine, limonene and menthol. Any of this compound is familiar to you? Morphine, nicotine, limonene, menthol. So we, I hope you heard this names, morphine and nicotine at least. Morphine is an opium-based alkaloid which is used as a pain reliever. And nicotine is also an alkaloid which is the main psychoactive ingredient in tobacco products. And this is also a stimulant drug. Then limonene is a monoterpenoid, cyclic monoterpenoid, uh, which is responsible for the fragrance in oranges. And therefore it is used as a flavoring agent in food. Then menthol. It is isolated from means uh, that kind of smell. Like it is also pain relieving kind of monoterpy. Arvind, then can you try this question? Okay. Prahlad, any structure is familiar for you from this four? Yeah, that is right. Morphine C. So C1, there is only one option. So this is the structure of menthol, this particular isomer like methyl and OH in uh, towards us and uh, this group in the below position. That is the structure of menthol. I, other isomers are having different names like isomenthol, different names are there. Then this compound is nicotine, which is the psychoactive ingredient in tobaccos. Then this is morphine and this is a monoterpenoid, cyclic monoterpenoid that is limonene. Now, the major products A and B formed in the following reaction sequence. So, we have to identify the two products A and B. <clears throat> Which is this reaction, first reaction? It is also a named reaction. Which is that? And then can you identify this reaction? Which is this reaction? Yeah. Okay. 
First reaction is Sharp plus asymmetric epoxidation. Yeah. Fourth one. Uh, can you explain? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So your second one is like if this is the product, this is correct. That approach is correct. But actually, this is the correct answer. Option C. Uh, so I want to ask you how you determine this. This will come above side. This epoxide will be coming in above side. This this is playing role here. L plus DET. Yeah, diethyl tartarite. Like if it is minus, it will be attacking from one phase. If it is plus, it will be attacking from other phase. So here actually, this is the concept. Like if we are considering our allylic alcohol in this position, using plus DET, the attack will be from RE phase. And if we are using minus DET, it is, uh, the attack will be from Psi phase. Maybe this you can note down uh, because this concept is being applied in every case of sharpness asymmetric epoxidation. Using this concept only, we can determine whether our epoxide will be coming above side or below side. And the second reaction, what you told us correct, epoxide ring will be opened and here it will come OH and uh, this NaOH can abstract this proton as well and here, uh, no, this will be attacking here to give S tertiary butyl group. This thio group will come here. Like substitution and epoxide ring opening reaction. And for recognizing this concept, like from where it will be forming epoxide above phase or below phase, we have to check whether this is RA attacking from RE phase or SI phase, then only we will be able because it is plus DET, it will be attacking from pre phase. Okay. So next is one simple question. Which of the following diens will not undergo Diels-Alder reaction? One only. Sure. Why? Forest trans. Yeah, one and five. So only cis dienes can be used for Diels-Alder reactions. Here it is trans, and here it is cis. This is also cis. This is also cis. But here also it is trans. So these two dienes cannot be used for Diels-Alder reaction. Then what will be the product in this reaction? This quinolin when we are subjected to lithium liquid ammonia condition. So what is this name reaction? Yeah, burst reduction. So, which will be the product? Prahlad, are you familiar with these reactions? I didn't hear you. Okay, okay.
Arvind, then uh, can you tell which is, which will be the answer? Yeah, yeah, take your time. So for Prahlad, this is the basically what is happening in this reaction. Uh, that is lithium in presence of uh, liquid ammonia. This species will be generated. This is like electron, uh, solvated electron kind of species is generated. And this is responsible for the reduction there. This is, a, this is an electronic reduction. But as it is mentioned here, this solvated electrons will be having an intense blue color to the solution. And it should be captured as the metal releases them. Otherwise, there is a possibility that it can um, reduce the ammonia into NH2 minus, then this birch reduction will not take place because this electron will not be available then. So as this blue solution indicates that this electron is available and that solution is can be used for birch reduction. So this is a mechanism of that birch reduction. This electron... <coughs> Uh, will be donated to uh, this one of the aromatic carbons thereby producing this uh, anion here and one radical at this position then we will be using alcohol as the solvent for basic uh, birch reduction condition so proton will be abstracted from this alcohol to get this radical and then one more electron will be donated to this radical thereby resulting in this anion then again this anion will be uh, abstracting a proton from this alcohol and we will get this reduced product that is it is used for the reduction of aromatic rings aromatic rings but here our question is that um, which will be the product because this both are aromatic rings so we have to predict whether this ring will be reduced or this ring will be reduced or both will be reduced So as this is an electronic reduction, uh, which ring will be preferred? Electron rich ring or electron deficient ring? Electron rich ring, electron is attacking. So which ring it will be preferred? Electron rich or electron deficient? Lesser. So out of these two rings, where is more electron deficiency? can ring this ring right and the reason is the electronegativity of nitrogen will make this uh, ring less electron rich that is it will be electron deficient so this ring only will be getting reduced and we will be getting this as the product fine and then is it okay okay so this is the concept that is less electron rich aromatic rings will be reduced in the case of bicyclic aromatic compounds. Here another one uh, pro compound is given which is having OH group and as we know this will be having electron donating nature and therefore this ring will be more electron rich compared to this ring. Therefore in that case the carbon all carbon substituted aromatic ring will be uh, that is without this hydroxyl group that ring will be reduced but in the case of this quinoline moiety here due to this presence of this nitrogen electronegative nitrogen atom this ring will be reduced and we will get this product now this one identify the major products a and b in the following transformation same quinoline and pyridine we are treating with nanh2 so nh2 minus will be attacking it is basically a nucleophilic substitution kind of reaction, nucleophilic addition. Answer is fourth one. Uh, option A is correct, but second one, how it will come? Like this is correct. Okay, why you think of this option?
uh, for nucleophilic addition, uh, I think this is the correct answer. Yeah, because uh, since we, as we told, this is having this this bond will be shifted here, and the second position will be then having positive charge. Then another possibility is that this bond can shift here, and here fourth position can have positive charge. So the first nucleophilic substitution will always go to the second position of this pyridine ring. If that second position is occupied, then only it will go to fourth position. So the second and fourth position will be available for substitutions. Same with the case of this ring as well. In all and also, second position will be more active towards uh, nucleophilic additions. Okay. Now identify the correct structure of the major product in the following reaction. We are having this compound and we are heating it to 196 degrees Celsius. So we are not using anything else. So what will be the reaction? Yes. It's a type of 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement. 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement, Claisen rearrangement. And what will be the product? Okay. So here we can number this as 1 and this is 2. This is 3. Similarly, I am numbering this is 1. This position as 2 and this as 3. Sorry for that. I hope you understand this is 3. So in basically 3-3 three, three sigma tropic rearrangement, this 1-1 one, one bond will be getting cleaved. And there will be a new bond formation between this 3-3 three, three positions. So this bond will be getting cleaved and one bond will be formed here. So... Uh, like it is like this bond will be shifted to here and this bond will be shifted to here and this will be uh, uh, shifted to here like this. So this breaking bond that electrons will go to this and therefore it will form a ketone or an aldehyde here because this bond is breaking. And this double bond, which is already here, will be shifted to this position. Is it clear, Prahla? Like this, will, this bond will shift to here. This will go to here. And this will go to here. One, one bond will be breaking and three, three bond will be forming. So, which will be the answer? Answer. Option 2 will be the answer. What? Pyrochemistry. That is controlled by this methyl group. Because this is already in above position. So, this will be attacking from below position, alpha side. In the following equilibrium, conformer B is more stable than conformer A when the R group is <coughs> so for this kind of 1,4 substituted cyclohexanes, which will be the stable conformer, diequatorial or diaxial.
and then uh, can you try okay uh, both are sir same so which will be stable if it is coming in this both in diaxial position rather than this di equatorial position basically which is the stable conformer usually we will be saying di equatorial is more stable than diaxial yeah And what is the destabilizing factor which which we used to say in the case of diaxial conformer? Like in the case of diaxial conformer, we used to tell about this 1-3 diaxial interaction. The here these hydrogens which are which are in axial positions can destabilize the ring because of the steric reasons this can destabilize these rings so if there are two r groups in the axial positions four such kind of one three diaxial interaction will be there that is a kind of destabilizing interaction but in the case of di equatorial the axial hydrogens will not create a problem with the r group because it is in equatorial position but here they have asked about the opposite thing like when this will be stable axial when it will be stable Yeah, it's right. Prahlad, can you? Yes. No, right? What is the reason? Ferric hindrance? Huh. Okay. Yeah, therefore, uh, this 1-3 diaxial destabilizing effect will be less. Yeah, that is also one possibility. But the major reason is that if uh, fluorine is here, uh, then like consider this RS fluorine. Then these two bonds are anti-periplanar nature. So there is possibility for hyperconjugation. Fine, like this will go and this says F minus it will be existing here it will be double bond so that is a stabilizing factor hyperconjugation like electronic effects we have seen inductive effect resonance effect similarly hyperconjugation is also a stabilizing factor but that is possible only with fluorine here yeah so in the case of this diequatorial conformer of that uh, with fluorine there is no such stabilizing factor like hyperconjugation because in this case, this bond and this carbon-carbon bond will be anti-periplanar. As we know, carbon-carbon bond cannot be involved in hyperconjugation. There is no possibility of hyperconjugation in this diequatorial conformer. Now, last question. Major products of uh, A and B formed in the following reaction sequence. First condition is uh, dimethyl copper lithium species and then second one zinc copper couple and ch2i2 can you name this reagent no what do you know what is the name of this reagent which one and reagent and second one Uh, carbon insertion, what is the name of that reaction? 
yeah simon smith reaction we have seen that in the video uh, for the total synthesis of that last molecule the cyclopropane is constructed with this kind of simon smith reaction okay that is fine uh, simon smith uh, uh, i will explain the mechanism in the next class basically that is the formation of uh, this kind of cyclopropane from this kind of uh, alkene and in the presence of the zinc copper couple and this kind of halides the ch2 carbene will be formed like this kind of species will be formed ch2 this kind of species will be formed so this Double bond can attack on. Yeah. 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 Fine. Okay, so the concept is correct. Like, uh, as he told, first this gilman is used for this addition of this methyl group. Actually, this is like me uh, minus species will be available. So this me minus species will attack at this position here. So here it will come one methyl group, and because of that, this double bond will be shifted to this position and this epoxide will be opened so that here it will be OH. And here one thing you have to remember is that from which side uh, this methyl group is attacking, epoxide will open in the opposite side. Is it okay? Then uh, third will not come. Because here methyl group and OH is in the same position. Same position. Answer is, yeah, let's see. So first one, you understood, both of you understood, like this will be the product. Prahlad, is it fine? Yeah, methyl group will be attacking here and this alkene shift to here, epoxide will open from the phase which is opposite to that of this methyl addition. Then next is uh, this alkene will react with this carbene generated and it will form a cyclopropane ring here. So there are two possibilities. Either it can come in the same side as that of hydroxyl or it can come in the same side of that of methyl group. So what do you think? Actually, for this kind of reactions, this hydroxyl group will act as the directing group. Directing group means the attacking group, uh, group or the incoming group will be attacking from the same phase as that of the hydroxyl group. So whenever in a stereo control reaction, if hydroxyl group is here, there, mostly the incoming group will be directed by that hydroxyl group. Mostly in this case, it's like this is an allylic alcohol basically. So in that case, it is having more control of this double bond. Rather than this from this methyl group position, this hydroxyl group acts as the directing group here. Yeah, so option A will be the right answer. First, Gilman addition will result in this product A and then followed by this Simon Smith reaction with OH as the directing group will give this uh, cyclopropane in the above side. Is it fine? Uh, because here, a steric reason also there because this methyl group is in uh, back side, no, alpha position. Ah, that is, I will read, I will discuss about that directing effect in next class. This 
how it will be controlling this carbene reactions and other reactions also like um, we have seen that sharp plus asymmetric epoxidation as well here also actually the OH group is have the directing effects and if this was a chiral center then this epoxide will obviously come from the directly from this side of the hydroxyl group as only but here it is not chiral so we have to check whether it is like uh, which is attacking an SI phase or RA phase will be preferred that we have to analyze that I will discuss in the next class directing effects on of hydroxyl group on reactions okay other than that any clarification so this much was the content I prepared for this tutorial just summary and this week zero assignment Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining. So we will meet in next Sunday, three o'clock. Thank you.